so welcome back to the channel for another bike review uh, well not really a review this time as what I've got today is a little bit different so the inspiration for this custom build was Mick Dewan's title winning Honda NSR 500 um, an iconic bike from an even more iconic era so what we've got here at its core is a 2000 spec Honda CBR 5 blade 900 RR and um, so a fairly well grounded starting point from there there's been a substantial amount of work to get the bike to what you see today and there's quite a bit to get through here so we'll start at the back of the bike and I'll work my way towards the front so the first thing you'll notice at least visually is this tailpiece now this is actually from a, a Yamaha R6 and this is sat on a custom fabricated subframe moving further down uh, you'll notice that this is not the um, original fireblade rear setup so the swing arm was actually lifted from a Aprilia RSV um, with Orleans rear shock in there as well the Aprilia swing arm is actually quite a common mod for the spec fireblade, there's a geometry between the uh, Aprilia swing arm and the fireblade stock swing arm is very very similar. So moving down a little you'll see a race fit system here, now this is not just a slip on, um, so for those of you that don't know, race fit are a premium exhaust manufacturer based here in the UK and are known as having um, the world's lightest titanium exhaust, so it's a full titanium system. So each individual system is hand designed and hand fabricated at their uh, factory which are based in Derbyshire. So being that the full system is made of titanium um, generally speaking you're going to find that the titanium systems are on average two thirds lighter than a stock OEM exhaust. Um, in some cases with certain bikes it can be up to 70-80% lighter. Uh, they sound absolutely fantastic as well. So just moving up a little bit then from the exhaust we're going to get to the engine. So the engine is predominantly um, the stock Fireblade engine. It's a stock engine that came with this bike. It's covered just 12,000 miles. So it has had some work done to it. Um, the cabaret has well been set up on the dyno. We've got uh, port and floored heads, Yoshimura headers. The bike at one point was running race cams, um, though it's been reverted back to stock cams for road use. Just before filming, the bike has just come off the dyno and was pulling 121 brake horsepower. So not bad at all for a 21 year old bike. Moving further up again, um, we're going to get to the front suspension. So this is something I've not really seen. Um, on a road bike. We've got full BSB spec Orleans, uh, the forks, steam damp here as well. So in the not too distant past, um, a sizable amount of money would have been spent for sure um, setting up the suspension on this bike. So there's loads of little bits and pieces that I've not touched on, you know, brake lines, all that kind of stuff. Um, but what I really want to do now is get out on the road and see how it rides. So just before we do that, uh, this bike is here today courtesy of JD Comps. So JD Comps have given us a few cracking bikes over uh, recent months to have a play with and the very best part is they give you the chance to win the bike that's been featured in the video. So the uh, 636, the R1, the TL1000R that we did, they've all now gone on to the lucky winners and this is going to be the next bike that's up for grabs. I'll leave the website in the description below. Um, please do go across and take a look at their website and see what you need to do to get your name in the hat to potentially win this bike. <laughs> Okay, so first impressions, it's bloody loud. When I picked the bike up, Rob did give me a forewarning that the, uh... Jesus, the race fit system was really loud. They were definitely going to hear you coming, that's for sure. Jesus Christ. But if the camera's picking that up, but it's popping and banging just getting the bike ready to set off and it's so funny how the whole procedures change between modern bikes you know nowadays you kind of start the bike up let it run for a little while and then you know where you get your levers on and you're away whereas with this you're messing with the choke and the fuel taps and stuff like that It's lovely. I mean, to say it's uh, a 21 year old bike. <laughs> you wouldn't figure it at all. Handles fantastic. I mean, I think the uh, the full all ins that this bike's got, it's probably a little bit overkill for the road. The front of the bike is BSB spec. Now, I'm not sure if it was actually from an ex BSB bike or something like that or if it's just the same spec equipment as what they would have used at the time but the amount of adjustability and things like that that you'll have is far more than you're ever going to need on the road 
but one of the main issues of the original 900RR in its stock form than was the suspension well I don't think it was particularly anything directly wrong with it you know it wasn't known as a, a bad handling bike but I think there's a lot more Honda could have done the first time round to make it more of what it should have been being obviously back in 2000 this was the flagship the flagship superbike just listen to that one third through the rev range and it's just screaming already <laughs> the front brake could do with just a little bit a little bit more it feels a bit slack could just be something as simple as some air in the lines i'm not sure what pads and calipers it's running i see the caliper on the back being the aprilia swing arm there it's an aprilia caliper as well mounted underneath I'm not too sure exactly what's on the the front obviously it's got the braided brake lines as well so i'm fairly confident there's nothing that's wrong with the bike it might just be a case of the old trick of a cable tie around the front around the front brake leave it overnight and just pop the b valve in the morning just to purge any air that might be there so it's a little bit funny in a way um apologies about the wind noise by the way it's super super windy today so today is tuesday at the time of recording this video and obviously here we're on the a 2000 spec fireblade um first day of this week so in two days time i'll be heading on a little bit of a road trip um, as i've been lucky enough to uh, get the opportunity to ride the brand new uh, fireblade 1000 r uh, uh, sorry pothole there um the yeah the new fireblade triple r rrr whatever you want to call it I'm not sure if it's a 2020 model or a 2021 model. <laughs> a bit funny there, coming off the roundabout, you stick the indicator on and you hear it clicking. <laughs> Something you don't normally encounter anymore with a uh, modern era of bikes. Um, so, yes, yeah, so I'll be test riding on Thursday the 2020 or 2021 uh, Fireblade Triple R um, so that's going to be super interesting just especially after being on this one today just to see what 20 years worth of development has done um, obviously it's it's not a fair comparison by any stretch you know this bike's putting in I think it's around 118 brake horse the standard it's putting 121 out now I believe the new Fireblade I'll ride on Thursday 214 stock um, so <laughs> totally different animal altogether but I'm really interested to see yeah, so that video will probably be out um, over the weekend early next week uh, so make sure you subscribe to the channel if you don't want to miss that so just waiting to get going a little bit here so the bike is actually very comfortable um, the mostly at least anyway the original seat position and comfort is maintained from the original spec fire blade Obviously it does have the R6 end on it with the uh, the custom subframe. Now I'm not sure the dimensions of it but just from how I feel riding the bike um, it does squash your legs just a little bit here, I don't know if you can see um, I think the, the custom subframe might just sit a bit higher than the stock one but obviously you just shift your bum back a little bit in the seat and that rectifies that straight away not sure if the camera yeah, the microphone, sorry, I'll pick it up over the exhaust note. But just from the bottom of the helmet, I can hear the engine just purring away beautifully. It sounds absolutely sweet as a nut. I was only covering 12,000 miles uh, in the last 21 years. It's, it's not really done a big lot. Um, and looking at the build quality of the work that's been done to the bike, um, I believe it's one owner, in fact. I think the, the chap that owned it from new... I assume it's a gentleman who's done all of the work on the bike um, but yeah just looking at the build quality of the work that's been done you can see the attention to detail um, nothing's been missed everything is just really well finished very nice work yeah but I'll laugh I've just been done by a scooter You wind that on a little bit and that's absolutely not struggling for, for torque at all. But it's quite it's quite refreshing, it's not 
it's quick there's no denying it's quick but it's very uh it's very linear and gradual how it gets there it's not trying to pull your arms out of your sockets it's <laughs> having a system this loud just brings out the 12 year old boy handfuls of throttle just so you can come off the throttle and listen to it pop on gargle on the way back down yeah, I'm definitely 100% happy with that front brake I'll be uh, I'll be sure to mention it to Rob when I get back to the back to the dealership there this, obviously the bike's not actually gone live on the website yet uh, I think that could be possibly today or maybe some point this week um, if it's a bit of air in the lines obviously it's a nice easy fix but I'll mention it to the lads there make sure to get that sorted so it's ready for whoever's lucky enough to win this bike holds its position on the road just so so well I mean this road's a the road's pretty knackered you know there's a lot of potholes and dips some unusual camber and it just effortlessly just sticks um, so it's probably a mix between obviously the old and stuff's doing wonders for keeping the bike stable um, and the bike's running um, I think it's Bridgestone Battle Axe that's on it so obviously it's a Fairly decent tyre, plenty of grip. Picks up speed so quickly. <clears throat> and this guy in front's going to have his knee down in a minute. Yeah, for being a... Uh, I mean, it was classed as a, a super bike of its time. The 900, uh, it's actually, I think it's a 929 uh, CC engine. So I mean, it's not a huge engine by any accounts. Jesus, that's so loud. I think if this was my bike, I'd definitely be investing in a good pair of earplugs. It's unfortunate the roads are so busy. It's uh, always seems to be the case when I have a bike road test lined up like everybody else knows it seems to come out intentionally but I suppose at the end of the day it is just that it's a road test it's not a track test you know I mean a bike like this it's plenty quick enough for what you'll need more than capable of putting a massive smile on your face but at the same time like now popping around here what we're doing 30, 30 miles an hour stuck on a double white line I mean, it's, it's not really a handful at all it's nice and light it's comfortable it's not too snatchy I know Rob was saying when I picked the bike up that it did previously have the race cams in there and that was one of the biggest issues particularly for the road it <coughs> just made the throttle so snatchy and obviously on a track it's not too bad I mean it's not ideal but you can work with it a lot more on the track whereas on the road you know you spend a lot of time below RPM you don't want to be lurching and shuddering around all the time it's just going to make your life hard yeah we come on this is that popping, it's like a gatling gun behind you sounds absolutely superb must admit I'm surprised how comfortable the bike is um, I've never been on the original Fireblade 900 double R so I can't really comment on any differences but the R6 seat is so cushy it's really nice you do seem to slide forward a little bit I'm not sure if the subframe's got a slight incline on it it just kind of pushes your bum down towards the tank a little bit but minor 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 issue ride quality feels really harsh on this uh on this uneven road but it doesn't distract from the comfort obviously the stiffness of the springs is probably uh, the previous owner's preference they could all be dialed out and messed around with you've got a plethora of customizability with a uh, full all-in setup for the sake of the test review and the test ride I'm not gonna obviously start messing around with that stuff but just an observation more than anything tackles these long sweeping bends just so easily so I'm not wanting to push too hard actually I'm not very happy with the front brake so 
because it's a bit daft going in uh, full throttle into a bend if it was not 100 percent as i just like to stress it's really not anything to be worrying about i'm pretty sure it's just a little bit of air in the lines literally a, a five minute fix how cool is that So just a reminder that there is an opportunity to win this bike that I've uh, that's been featured in today's video. Be sure to check out the link in the description. See what you need to do to get your name in the hat. Um, if you're watching this and it's a few weeks down the line, someone would have already run this bike, so sorry that you're too late. Uh, but do still go and check out their website. Um, they've got all sorts of stuff. I mean, just as I was. Uh, picking this bike up in the corner there, they've got a pile of TVs and pot tubs and all sorts of stuff. They tend to get a new bike in every month, um, along with a new car, so I've not done a review for a couple of months, as the last few bikes I've had in have been um, custom street fighters. You might have seen them, I did share them onto the Facebook page, smart as anything, but being that particularly the channel and the Facebook group, all 10,000, 10,500 people are there, they're all predominantly there for the superbike stuff. Um, so for the time being I'd like to stick on that route. I am also looking at um, potentially a new series on the channel as a, a cafe racer project uh, featuring an old Honda uh, CB550 from the 70s. It's something I've been toying with for a little, a little while now. Um, I did put the feelers out on the Facebook page a little while ago. A few of you dimed in and said you'd like to see it so if there's something you'd be interested in, do let me know. Alright, we're getting back into the, the built up areas again now. Uh, so I think what I might do I'll spin around here and I'll find a quiet lane somewhere to pull over and uh, I'll give you my closing thoughts after having a little while bombing around on this bike. So after spending the afternoon on this bike, um, if I'm absolutely honest with you, I can't remember the last time I had so much fun on a bike as old as this one. The bike feels super super light um, and even though it's by far um, nowhere near as powerful as the super bikes of today, it doesn't at all feel like it's missing anything. It pulls hard right away through the rev range. Um, and the sound is just absolutely bonkers. Given that it's um, a Honda at its heart, um, reliability is not something you're gonna have to worry about. So owners of the stock 900 RR generally had two main gripes. Um, one of those was the exhaust, so the stock exhaust was very, very restrictive, um, or equally as bad, somebody would stick an end can on uh, with a hard and a cab set up to match. The other issue was the stock suspension. And um, while there wasn't particularly anything wrong with it, there was certainly a lot of room for improvement. Obviously both of, both of those elements have been completely overhauled on this bike. Um, the full all-ins at the front and the rear are going to give you more than enough flexibility to adjust the bike to wherever you're riding um, on the road or on the track. So that concludes it for this little feature of this awesome uh, CBR900RR. If you made it this far, please do leave a like down below. Um, we've got lots of exciting superbike content planned over the coming weeks and months, so please do consider subscribing to the channel. It really, really helps us out. Thanks so much for watching. Take care and I look forward to seeing you all in the next video.